Well, all right, folks. How's it going, fellow Rust players? We got another video for you today where we work on the Tier 2 auto smelting system, which is basically just an expansion of a Tier 1 system, only with parts that you can build on a workbench. Yeah. And with the Tier 2 workbench, it's going to be basically much better of a system, but the same rules still apply to the last video. Although, the setup will be different, you know. In some ways, some people might want to just skip the Tier 1 system, so they'll be jumping to the Tier 2 system. And that's easy. All you really got to do is check this out right here. And... You won't need too many different things. Obviously, it's tier two because you're going to be utilizing the electric smelters. You're going to want at least a medium battery. You're going to need probably three solar panels, maybe four. You're going to want at least two to three root combiners. You're going to need a branch and a splitter and obviously a wire tool and a pipe tool and a large box. So... Let's get this set up really quick, and it's a super easy setup. We'll start off with the actual electric furnaces. Important part because putting this in your base, you're gonna want to know overall where you can place stuff. So real quick, you can put these adapters on the front. I believe you can also put them on the sides, right? You see right there. So you have two options where you can put it so if you're trying to hide this in your honeycomb or whatever you're going to want to get these set up with this first so keep that in mind out other than that we're working with three for the simple reason that we're using splitters and only get three to a splitter other than that if you're going to want to add another three more you're just going to need one more branch and one more splitter and then you know Three more of these, three more of those, and you can keep adding as many as you basically want. But one thing to remember is that it's going to be a power consumption thing. Each of these use three power, so technically you could power it off of a medium battery. It's just that it's going to run out of power pretty quickly if it's nighttime. So getting the bigger battery definitely helps in this, this respect. So once we got that down, let's just go ahead and throw the big battery down again. You doesn't need to set up all crazy or anything. You just need to get the battery down and then build some wood panels. And with these, we're just going to put them, obviously, facing the sun. You know, some people switch it up so you got two going one way, one going the other way. It's whatever you feel is necessary. And then, obviously, you probably want to hide the miners area. It may not be but for this demonstration, basic firing and taking to the solar panels and combining them, root combiner, and then the third one is. This might be other people consider to be scuffed setup, but if it works and you're trying to get it done as quick as possible, this should be. At least figure out how you're going. After that, we'll go ahead and power that bad boy. Then we can set up the branch and branch down, put her down, power into branch, and we're branch out for every for all of our power needs. And you know what? We forgot to put a conveyor. To make that. So first off, you know, it says 47 power out. We're just going to put all that power to litter. And then we're going to wire each. Notice that you can actually have access. Wire them up. That's actually kind of nice. You know, top one. It'll tell you which one it's supposed to be. Then, got that down. We'll just go ahead and put a box out again. We'll throw up storage adapter on it. And we will our bear on the this branch I'm going to take the branch out power and run it guy on start working 
be able to just leave them on forever as long as you got power i don't I'm gonna run out of power but from there we're just gonna go from the storage adapter out I'm gonna run that into put on the conveyor and then we're gonna run the output through all the rest of the conveyors chain them together fancy nothing done in order to get it to work it'll work exactly the same way as the other system at least this time you're not going to need any and borrow some of this here and throw it in this box and rather quickly that it's just going to start moving stuff on its own and getting everything now one thing oh make sure you turn it on and once you got it turned on it's basically going to start rolling baby and you ain't got to do nothing and this is probably the most efficient way to have it you really don't need a lot like even for a single person three furnaces is probably going to be plenty fast for you all the way up to even bigger groups like i mean normally i don't see more than nine of these things slap down to usually get all of the stuff that you need so like you can take this particular setup and expand it as you want you know literally you can throw down three more of these guys you're gonna add one and then you're just gonna disconnect it from right here take it to the next branch and then split off the power and just keep going no it's not too difficult and as you see with it it runs a lot faster right now, of course, you're not going to make charcoal, but if you've already created these other furnaces, technically, if you just remove all of this stuff, it'll just be a charcoal machine. So, that's the way that you should look at it, you know? Don't think of it as a waste. Technically, you're always still going to need charcoal, especially for all that furnace that you're going to be cooking, or all that, all that sulfur that you're going to boom bullets whatever then you just basically repurpose your old machine into being a charcoal machine and you can add more of the older smaller furnaces to just create the most efficient charcoal machine ever that's just going to eat through anything that you put into it and basically now you have the idea as why we separated it to a tier one and a system and the tier two systems obviously the better system you just want to realize that you know hey you can even run all of these together with just one unit right like if i take this output right here i disconnect it and then i run it all the way over here and i hit that there See if we can get this. Okay, it's not letting me do it right. Let's try that again. Industrial in from this industrial out. Why is it not letting me go? Pipe is. There we go. Oh. I guess sometimes weird stuff happens. Pipe is blocked. There we go. So now technically I could run the other furnaces off of the system too. It's only going to take one box and you don't have to program anything, you know, filter guy. And that's just basically because we this these things can't take wood in. So it's just not ever going to be able to put it in there. But it'll continuously keep filling up the wood in these boxes. And it'll still even cook stuff with them. So it's not like you're going to lose too much. You don't even have to really set anything extra up here other than the extra power requirement. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of what to do when looking to actually utilize pretty much the best circuit in Rust. And it's super simple doesn't have to you don't have to automate your whole base for this to work although you can just in, integrate this into any sorting system at any point in the line 
whether it's at the end in the beginning or you're just branching it off one box and literally you know this will still fit in your standard two by two pretty easily so thank you for watching the video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy the content like this and see us again on the next one we're going to be setting up a lot more circuits moving forward that you can utilize in your day-to-day -day on rust have a good one